Greetings, geeks. It's episode 635 of Geeks in Space. I'm Rob Commander Takamalda, and I am here today with Chris Devona. Hi. Rob Roseboom. Hello. Gentlemen, we already discussed whatever was exploded in our neighborhoods over the weekend. <laughs> Indeed. Tannerite. <laughs> yes. Tannerite canisters. Wow. Do you make those yourself? <sighs> yeah. Sweet. You can, so, uh, you a, can uh, order Tannerite right now. You just need a high enough caliber rifle to set it off. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the uh, the the reservation is is actually just across the pass here from us, and so there's like I'm not getting like four enormous fireworks stands, right? That are basically left set up all year, and then they staff them and stock them. You know, coming up to July Fourth, and uh, one is one of the places because it, it's illegal to light off fireworks on the place i live but it's it's legal in, in but it's not legal if you get rest. on a platform and float 10 feet into the water well that too um no but the funny thing was uh one of them had a sign that said buy here fire here and i'm like yeah. that doesn't seem smart you know here just just let them off in the fire in, in the parking lot i'm sure nothing will ever go wrong i mean yeah. we saw a lot of pictures in the last 48 hours of various fireworks disasters things going wrong yeah right? there was uh, a full fireworks stand that went up there was the not san diego um oh ocean city maryland went up uh their their truck carrying all the fireworks out to set up set them up went off um, Boom. yeah and then, like 400 fires in in a given fire district i think so just... we've Plus, leading up to this, did you guys see the, can't remember what government safety agency it was, but they put out videos of their uh, firework tests and them just basically blowing up mannequins with various <laughs> fireworks, see, blowing the, up hands. That's a job I want. Uh, the uh, the fireworks in our neighborhood got rained out this year, uh, mm. which was disappointing, but uh, normally they do it in this, there's a sort of a bridge between the two puddles in our neighborhood and uh so it's a good view when something goes wrong and something did go wrong a few years ago and it was awesome <laughs> yeah well they they canceled the fireworks officially on you know the lake where my boat is uh because of a drowning but this <laughs> year they, they they brought it back unofficially in the they because a of a video. drowning were they setting off roman candles <laughs> in the middle of the water oh this is a good story for the air well there's <laughs> there's a big sandbar that goes across oh. the lake oh and someone and, was out uh, on the sandbar fooling around well not someone like like hundreds of people they, wow and they had a band out there playing wow. on pontoon boats so yeah freedom yep freedom freedom is not free it has a price yeah, and it's like what uh, you know, two bucks for a for a line of lady fingers. <laughs> Five dollars for parking. <laughs> Five dollars for parking. Uh, so the breathing PC uh, that I shared with you, Chris, is uh, not any big thing, but I just thought this is like the stupidest idea to try, and we should. You can uh, if you can queue up a bit of that video. Uh, sure. It's nothing special, but uh, I just find it groovy because uh, I've you know. Watch yeah, this is DIY perks, right? Yeah, yeah. I've watched a million videos of people building PCs, but I ain't never seen anybody build that. Uh, well, I liked how, uh, how effective it was when combined with the the water loop cooling. You know, seems like that it should work. Neat. It seems like it should work. Hold on, I'm working on it. It's all good. So there's the DIY perks guy. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of annoying. He looks like uh, the guy from Game of Thrones. Which guy? They all look like him. The bad guy that I don't like who uh, everything horrible happened to. Uh, and he was a horrible Ram person. And then he got Ramsey worse. Ramsey Bolton? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, the, uh, Reek. Reek. Yeah, he looks like Reek. No cushioning. But here's Even the thing. When both the thing I, I really felt bad for him is when he A loose fit his, like this would mean that the bellows would... His, his, his pipe broke. Mm. Uh, Different tubes. Let's see if I can find it. It's one of those moments you're like, Duh. disaster. The acrylic tube for the magnet has shattered. That's because you and should be using glass. Yeah, because glass never. Nope, glass is shattered. indestructible. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Well, the long and short of it, he's basically using like uh, it's a giant a bellows. Column. If you go forward, yeah. like skip to like the last thirty seconds, yeah, video, he, he's just got uh, just seeing the thing operate. Pretty That's all I care about. It's just neat. And has a peaceful quality to it. It's tranquil. It's got like a, a wheezy noise. Whoop, whoop, the whoop, little window, whoop. the little windows flapping in and up, but it's neat. I'm it all, is. Yeah. It is. I mean, so I think those performances. It's huge, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically a fan replacement. Yeah, yeah look at it. It's very reasonable. I know that it's <laughs> not at all practical, but uh, it is and... a. New and perfect cool if system, if up until this point you've been used to sleeping in a room with someone with an iron lung. That's right. <laughs> right? I mean, it's probably Boo. no louder than your CPAP machine. Boo. Yeah. Boo. yeah. So we've crossed a historical milestone. Wonder... Oh, go ahead. What? What's that? A um, BitTorrent turned 20 years old. Wow. 20 years old. How did, how on earth did we copy ISOs with air quotes, he says. I uh, before, before BitTorrent, uh, files over UUCP. Yeah, yeah. I I actually I, I I do remember like when BitTorrent was coming out, and I remember very vividly. It wasn't even like the piracy thing, which was certainly a thing. Oh wait, uh, wait. Tell us a story, Grandpa. Oh, there, Grandpa. I just remember thinking like, oh my God, you fixed it, because in that era, it was still a pain in the ass to copy. You want to copy a gig somewhere? Mm -hmm. Like even even tw in in what two thousand one, it was hard to copy a you'd you even if you were copying it over stable internet connections, things would just oh that just stopped working and you know uh, like FTP resume would be unreliable uh, or the server would be cr would crash. Two thousand one was still a bad time for big this big. This is big my rsync face. This is my PSCP face. This wasn't that hard, you know. That said. Uh, if your goal was to copy around four gigabyte movies, that was harder because of the regulatory oversight. You couldn't just put one on a file server and say, have at it, y'all. Well, in 2001, so none of that was real. BitTorrent solved that, you know. So. In 2001, uh, there were DVDs in 2001. Uh, sure, but you weren't copying four gig VOBs over the Internet as a matter of practice in 2001. It was well, you weren't. All right. Well, I definitely wasn't. Uh, this is still in the area era where uh, 50 megs for uh, an audio for an album was like the upper bounds of what you would do if you mm. were into piracy. Uh, Napster. Yeah. Yes. Well, because this is before uh, you could reliably uh, highly compress video uh, and decompress video. Like it, back then, if you got a movie, it would be compressed down to to fit on a 600 meg CD. Yeah, uh, but even people, then, yeah. uh, the codecs that were available for video files, you had to have a high-end computer, and that was like that was what your computer did was decoded video. Uh, <laughs> so it wasn't like, it was a different world, man. Uh, but I just I remember just being thrilled because this was an actual legit problem that was legit solved. Copying a gig file was hard, and you had to do it a lot if you installed operating systems and such. I know you were fancy and had like high speed internet uh, in uh, offices, but we were dangling off of ghetto controllers in the middle of nowhere. It was not yeah. cool. Tannerite being exploded outside your door. Yeah. You know, you didn't have freedom. That's true. <laughs> freedom to blow up America. Uh, so uh, the next one was they announced uh, who's going up with Bezos. Uh, oh, uh, Wally we, Funk. Yeah. We missed this last time around. It was, kind of, it was just cool. Wally Funk. Uh, I felt this was an incredibly wholesome story. I did too. Uh, I thought it was kind of sweet. You know? I, uh, Scott Manley uh, had a I comment. I saw his review. Yeah, he had a comment on it. It was like, uh, maybe this is uh, Bezos' way of saying that he is a little more aware of the history of spaceflight uh, than uh, some of his rival CEOs yeah. seeking Oh, space. burn! 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 Burn. Um. So anyway, uh, it's a cool story. She was trained as part of the Mercury 13, which is kind of a media creation, but whatever. Uh, she had a zillion hours uh, in 2021. Uh, she would have just been put on the same team as the dudes who got to go to space. But, yeah. you know, it was the 60s. <laughs> yeah, she, she was a gal. Wrong, she had the wrong genitals, so yep. we couldn't send her into space. Yep. Monkey, well, monkeys and dogs, no problem. But, yeah. <laughs> but women, it's 1962, well, man. Let's not go crazy. You would have included 100 tampons, you know? 
<laughs> you heard yeah. that story. Yep, yep. Yeah. How many are you gonna need? Is a thousand enough? Is a thousand? It's like that Delta that, V for. That's a what it was, tampons. right? I thought the I yeah, thought it was a thousand something was the number. Is well, a that's a thousand tampons enough. That's how, there's the related story about how uh, uh, the men needed to connect no, the thing to their junk no. uh, in order to pee, uh, yes. but the men would not identify the actual properly fitting sizes of the adapter to connect to their <laughs> genitals, yeah. so they had to call them like all like extra large, and just all the guys got one that said extra large. <laughs> yeah. Even astronauts, even the 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 peak of physical fitness. Oh dear God! Um, okay, uh, that's a cool story. Um, do you see bringing emulation into the twenty first century? This is the craziest thing I've seen in a while. Well, I mean, crazier than tannerite being exploded outside of your door. No, that's that's normal. We live in Michigan. That's right, you're in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, is just... this the what is this? So this guy <laughs> built like he he's emulating. I think it's a Space Invaders. Uh, like from the seventies, but he's doing it using modern using uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, so he's having like he built a CPU, and like all the memory bus requests are all going out over cloud APIs. Oh God, this is horrible. <laughs> so, so it runs at like two kilohertz. <laughs> Oh my uh, goodness. Yeah, this is extraordinary. This is definitely a case of <laughs> you wow. you can do it, but oh my god, why? This person doesn't love space. Uh, Star, uh, space Invaders? Space Invaders, yeah. No, this is just a way to prevent the aliens from destroying the Earth. Wow. If your game only runs... Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at all these modules. Oh my goodness. Yeah, like he's he he rebuilt an entire 8080 or 8008. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, this is extraordinary. And he uses like yeah. every possible every library. language. Yeah, it, it's everything. So here's a bunch of Rust and this part's in C. Crystal. Oh my goodness. This Power would make shot. a great April Fool's Day prank, but I think this guy's doing it for legit. He's doing it for real. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The fact that this guy this guy better be hired by somebody awesome because this is this is the weirdest thing for somebody to do. No, I, honestly, I think he's one of these people who you should never, ever, ever hire. Ah. You'll end up with nothing but regret and unmaintainable code. <laughs> I mean, he's telling you who he is. You should believe him. <laughs> yeah, because I need an API call that goes into the cloud to write <laughs> one byte to of memory move. to in a memory address location. This is a very bad man. <laughs> I think this is fantastic. Uh, all right. Uh, Audacity. That was the weird wow. story in the last few days. So, oh, uh, the person works at Microsoft. That should tell you what you need. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> Oops. So Audacity has, the, in their next version, they put a bunch of warnings. Uh, audio, Audacity, the audio yeah. software. Uh, they put some warnings in that they're going to be uh, uh, doing some sort of tracking in the next version of their code. Uh, At least they told us. But, you know. Yeah, well... Uh, so, but like, there's a whole bunch of like overlapping little plot threads to this thing. Like, I guess the the core application was taken over by a different company a few months ago. People don't mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. They claim that it's just uh, like a very minimal set of uh, like the standard sort of tracking that I guarantee you every every application yeah. that you use has all of this. Well, tracking Microsoft already. has that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So. You can't tell me that when I load every single application on my desktop right now, that the same information isn't going somewhere. Especially uh, if you send a crash dump, to, you know, yeah, you know, that thing in windows that it says, do you want to, we're sending telemetry back to Microsoft so we can solve this problem. You're like, cancel, cancel. So, uh, but the argument I guess is, uh, that it was an open source application. It did not have that information and yeah. it should not have that information. Uh, they argue that if you just turn the internet off, it doesn't send that information. Uh, and also it's an open source application. So I guess we're going to have audacity too. <laughs> uh, probably. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, an, uni, there's an uni pizza <laughs> oven, Chris. Have you considered ordering one? And I mean, a cover. No, I, I already ordered one, you know. I have the cover actually already. <laughs> the cover arrived, but not, I just look at it sometimes. <laughs> but not the machine. You just, <laughs> not you just look the at the cover and think about how mean. nice it'll look. I do like yeah. pizza. Yeah. This is like how when I was a kid, uh, my friend Dave had the blue Voltron leg 
uh, lion, but not the rest of them. So every night before bed, he would fold it up into the leg position and put it on his desk and pretend that it was calling out to the rest of his lions so he could one day <laughs> form Voltron. Man, fourth grade is weird. Uh, sure. So anyway, uh, it is, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with Audacity right now. There's users who are grumpy. There are yeah. uh, there's the many company, forks. Yeah. The company that runs it is all like, hey, this all caught us by surprise. There's maintainers who are like, what the heck? Like, I'm not even going to pretend to tell you that I know what's going to actually happen or what's, what is actually happening. Because I think that there's probably some bad actors in there. And there's probably some unintent uh, that's ruining a whole bunch of people's day. Uh, well, I, I wonder because, like, I mean... Russia has not always been a good actor, you know, and this being a Russian company and sending telemetry back to Russia. Sure. Makes you go, hmm. Right. Yeah, that government is definitely different than our government. You know, Rob, I love you to death, but all these malware stories, they're all like, you know, spinoffs of the Russian, the RBN, you know, gang. And it's like. Well, I don't worry about that because I installed the Russian keyboard on uh, all of my iOS devices. <laughs> so that makes me safe. Uh, let's yes, see. that leaves you safe. Yep, I'm protected. Like the Pokemon being left behind in Afghanistan. I like the Pokemon being left behind in Afghanistan. And I don't understand the details of this story. I wish, uh, actually, Mr. Bates was on the phone with us today. Uh, yeah, where is he? This he, is his story. He was Maybe. angry. Uh, he posted an angry tweet about this story, saying that the person who wrote this story did not understand Pokemon Go, <laughs> which I thought was a very Jeff Bates thing <laughs> Which to is say. really his, his highest uh, criticism. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. The the most in, the most interesting part of the story to me was uh, another one that came out this morning, where the Afghani uh, new head of this base supposedly was not told the Americans were leaving, yeah. and had found out two hours after they had bugged out because he got reports that all the Americans are gone. Yep. So they <laughs> went there to see, and sure enough, they were all gone. Well, I mean, it's not like you're going to give him like a, a time. Hey, here's when we're all going to get inside these thin-skinned helicopters. Just, you know, for seeing you. Know, it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, at some point, someone has to shut off the lights, pass the keys over to the last guy on the tarmac and say, okay, we're out. Yeah. All right. We're going to we're gonna let this gym fall uh, yeah. to, to uh, <laughs> that, that level no. 37 Charmander that we just can't seem to stop. Yeah, I'm surprised you can't take them with you. Is it just like a matter of? I, I don't play Pokemon Go. Clearly, you know. I mean, I only Can understand you... it, you know, in the vaguest of senses. But mm. I mean, gyms are attached to locations in areas, and you can you attack them with your Pokemon, and then your Pokemon like guard them. Yeah, um, and I mean, couldn't we use this as a tool for peace? <laughs> <laughs> if the leftover gym was there, perhaps we just. Don't put any military items there, and we just fight in our Pokemon tournaments, right? Well, but That'll then, work. what's the episode of Star Trek, the original series, where they just murder everybody uh, in their simulated wars? Uh, yeah, maybe it yeah. has to be like that. Like, I, I am I am sorry, but your Geo dude uh, was defeated, uh, so I guess uh, we just have to kill 20 of your people now. Mm. I don't think that's safe. There's nothing safe about Afghanistan. So we still have a base with 632 uh, people in it. Plenty of them are just like the, you know, the military folks protecting the the other folks. But, you know, can can they go out, collect them in the gym and bring them back to the embassy? Do they have like an embassy pathway for Pokemon Go uh, gym members? You know, like they have a special line, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, U.S. nationals, f foreigners, Pokemon Go players. Well, I want to know... Perhaps you can get a special visa if you're going yeah, there to yeah, rescue yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a humanitarian. Like a, it, it, it's a, it's a Pokemon Go Sound Frontier, you know? <laughs> like, are there Pokemon gyms, like, across the, the demilitarized zone uh, between North and South Korea? Like, I mean, how do, this has to be a problem that's been solved you know, in other war zones. That's a really good question. I wonder if they, like, they like uh, play Pokemon Go across the DMZ. Oh, you know, yeah. And they put, if they put the mines where the gyms are. Oh dear. Gosh. Oh, that's dark, man. Oh well, there's nothing not dark about Afghanistan. Mm, that's um, true. Uh, James Webb uh, has passed uh, its launch review. Uh, yes. So, so in we're theory, on track for an October launch. An October launch. So they've been planning for launch. Oh, July twenty. J July twenty seventh. Really? Uh, well, they've been they've been trying to launch now since I think two thousand seven. 
Uh, so good on them. Here's hoping. Because uh, Hubble keeps... Uh, they haven't brought Hubble back yet. Uh, they do... Uh, I don't think it's coming back. I think it's dead in space. So the last that I had read is that there is a fallback system that is a big... Oh. That's a big switch that they can flip. Uh, but I think that's a Hail Mary kind of kind of switch. But there's one switch left they were going to try this week. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, they like may to... rename the James Webb, I learned in this article, um, because apparently a, 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 a gay person was drummed out and arrested uh, in the 60s at NASA. Just, uh, just one? Yeah. Uh, and so 1,200 people have asked to rename it from Webb to something else because he was, uh, he was part of that whole dark time in the, uh... America. The so. uh, For All Mankind show has a big plot line uh, in that space, which is actually quite interesting and fairly well done. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Twitter has lost liability protection in India. I didn't read this one. Uh, uh, I, I didn't realize that it happened. Um, but yeah, they'd been in, in sort of hot water there. Uh, and so, so India is like to... as bad as Florida now? <laughs> Yeah. No, but they can actually make it. You know, the Florida thing was stayed by a judge. There, he's like, "This is obvious BS." You know, so the Florida fix done, but India doesn't have the the free speech protections that I'm. <laughs> they don't have the free speech protections of Florida. <laughs> Think about that, right? Well, I mean, you know, you know, the thing about India is they're extremely concerned with reputation and face, and and they yeah. don't like places where people can just freely say bad things about the leadership. And so Funny it that. gets really touchy, really, really fast. There's, there's actually a a comedy competition show that Netflix picked <laughs> up that is all Indian comedians. Oh, and yeah? all you need to do to understand how their society and ours is different is watch about a half an hour of it and see what things the comedians can talk about and what things they can't. Yeah, it's amazing. Is it more like yeah. Seinfeld observational comedy? If it never uh, ever mentioned the city of New York. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of like family honor stuff. Huh. Um, that sort I remember, of thing. You know, like, the caste system is both still entrenched yeah. and also extremely sensitive. And if you're a comedian, how do you not make jokes about the caste system? You know, yeah, I mean, it's 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 like a gold uh, mine of humor. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't because it's illegal <laughs> and no one would pick you up. So yeah. it's very interesting <laughs> to see what things someone would say where the you know judges at the end were like, I don't know. That was a little bit risky. I don't know if that would fly everywhere. Uh, and like if you criticize even in passing, like yeah. one of the more popular, you know, Indian gurus in the Hindu religion. <sighs> wow. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a whole different thing. I mean, it's not quite less majesty laws in Thailand, but it's right. It's, it's it gives you one pause, you know. So sorry, sorry, Hong Kong. <laughs> well, did we do you do you put up a story about Hong Kong too? Oh, I I didn't. I just I just think about Hong Kong a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, wow. I mean, they just they put in a uh, what was it? Apple Media went out of business, and yeah, yeah. yeah I... The Chinese are like, you know what? During COVID, nobody cares what happens to Hong Kong. That's right. We're going to do whatever we want uh, for, a, for a year or two, and then it's going to be over. So, haha. Sigh. Why wait 25 years for the 50 year deal to expire? Why not just do it now? That's right. Rip that band aid off. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? In 50 years, there's only going to be China. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so uh, I don't know which one of you guys put up the, <laughs> the satellite know. dish amazing. bolted to a car hood, but that a is amazing. SpaceX. Yeah, SpaceX. Yeah. So therefore, we can the mention Starlight Elon dish. Musk. Right. <laughs> uh, so they didn't say what sort of business this guy was <laughs> running. The front of the car? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the hood. That's a, that's a hazard to navigation. Oh, it's everything. Yeah. But as you say... Only when I make right turns, right. the guy said. Yeah, you turn left, you're fine. Yeah. So the I didn't say, realize it was on the front. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah, so he runs a business out of his car, and uh, he says he just, you know, this is how he stays connected. Yeah. <laughs> a giant. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you could mount it somewhere else. 
No. Nah. Nah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this it's is a great story. It's only a problem if I turn right. And Not how often only. do you have to turn right? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just didn't put it together. This was on the <laughs> It's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so so my wife, she has a she has a a, a a, a dogmatic thing she says when we're driving and she says you know how i feel about people who hang too much crap from their review mirror right <laughs> it's like a direct measure of how good of a driver they are the more crap on their review mirror the less likely they're to be a good driver you give those people room that's right you know? and i'm picturing her seeing this guy just going just go on another highway <laughs> yep. And yeah. if you notice, it's it's mounted. It isn't center. <laughs> yeah. It it's in front of the driver. <laughs> yeah, it's right in front of him. Yeah. There's no possible like way this works. <laughs> oh, what a moron. He's got the cable literally draped over the windshield. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You know. Extraordinary. That generation of Prius did have some self-driving capabilities. So maybe he was trying to go all out and, you know, letting it do distant following cruise control. <laughs> But I think the, the camera they use is in the windshield. Well, the th- okay, I mean, so the, the the worst <laughs> thing the worst thing about all that is he had to stay home all day between eight and five for the insta- installation guy to show up. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think it's self installed, but yeah. The oh. the thing that I wonder about is uh, so you would have to like so the guy's pulled over on a highway, which at least means he was going like 55, 60 miles an hour. I don't know what the gas mileage would be, but do you know how you'd have to really bolt that thing on? Because uh, it's a yeah. gigantic piece of plastic. It's going to catch all the all the wind. Well, it's heavy, and it's basically like a sail. So yeah. So yeah, how, I mean, that, you would have to really reinforce that. There's a reason that your actual car antenna is a very thin piece of metal. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's my understanding this is very you. sturdy, you know, but still. Yeah. You know. I mean, you could drive bolts through it. That's you know, yeah, you'd have to. But like, like that... I've got a, I've got a ski rack that is mounted via via mechanical connection as opposed to those grippy things. Sure. And I was worried about it, but I was like, you know, I, I've put like two hundred and some pounds in that thing, and gone like ninety miles an hour across, you know, Nevada. It's yeah, hot. but it wasn't the shape of a pizza, That's facing true. directly into the wind, and then Actually, held more, on by more three to catch bolts. The wind. It's almost like a spoiler. It's putting... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's extraordinary it's that... the worst spoiler ever made <laughs> spoiler alert uh, uh, uh. yeah yeah sorry uh all right well we got a sad one uh mm. richard donner died this weekend goonies never say die that's right uh, as i said richard donner directed my superman nobody else has come mm. close yeah. uh and he still i still love that first superman movie deep down he's the best and he, he did Lethal Weapon, uh, yeah, and uh, he did a bunch of stuff. But I mean, Star Wars and Goonies, man, he's pretty neat. Uh, there's there's a number of really interesting documentaries uh, about him floating around. But uh, the key word with him apparently was verisimilitude. Uh, verisimilitude. Verisimilitude. He had a sign with that printed on it in his office, and that was like his thing that he would, uh, you know. That that was his word. He did some him. Gilligan's Island, some Man from Uncle, some Perry Mason. He was a hard worker. Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt. Wow, the, he goes back forever. The story of him and Superman Two is one that I always find to be very interesting. Inter- oh, yeah. And uh, the thing that I liked about so they filmed Superman One and Two at Lady the same time, right? Yeah. And uh, basically, they pulled him off and didn't let him finish Superman Two. And so he like half the footage is his, and then half the footage is uh, Lester. And uh, they offered to let him like have a co-directed credit or whatever, and he was like, "Nope. Uh, nope. D- that, if, it, if I didn't direct it all, then I didn't direct it. Uh, I didn't even want his name on the credits, so I respect that." Yeah, man he's a neat t- guy. Took pride in his work. Yep. Uh, the last one that we had on the list is uh, that uh, somebody who worked at Microsoft stole ten million dollars <laughs> worth of Xbox. Uh, well, you have somebody cards. on the testing team, and basically his job was to test that the gift card system was working. And as part of that, he could create test cards, but he found <laughs> out that the test cards could be redeemed. And so he he teamed up with a bunch of other criminals, both inside the company and out, and minted $10 million well, worth of Xbox gift you know, codes. When, when my wife was going through school and she was working 
the customer service desk at Meyer, one of her jobs was to send money overseas and to wire things. Oh boy. And this is like the, the stories of people who were unwittingly part of scams were just amazing. But you know, she had to process a lot of these things <laughs> if they met all these criteria. And almost exclusively they don't send money or anything now. It's all cards like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so it's iTunes cards, it is Xbox cards, it's gift cards is how they get around a lot of restrictions they put in place. So I would not be surprised if a bunch of those ended up in those places uh, through that. I guess I would, be, if I was this guy, I mean, this this reminds me in, to a certain extent of, uh, you remember the story about the Monopoly, my, the McDonald's Monopoly cards? Sure. Yeah, like yeah. they had insiders leaking that stuff out. This seems like this sort of thing. Like if you're the insider, the first link in that chain, how do you think you're not going to get caught? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's $10 million. Listen, I'm not saying that I have the soul of a thief, but the high of getting away with it can get past people. I've seen a bunch of people, both inside my current firm and others, who figure out a scam and they think they're never going to get caught. And it's so exhilarating. And they throw away a remarkable career with remarkable benefits. I could tell a story about a guy back in 2004 who we had to exit and was arrested. And I was like, they had a job yeah. that would have made them a thousand times what they made from their bit of larceny, but they couldn't not do it, you know? And so they went to jail and they lost their stock options, which ended up being worth, I'm not kidding, tens of millions of dollars. And it's like, what were you thinking? And it came down to, they just couldn't not steal. Crime is alluring. Yeah. Uh, what's stolen, you know? stolen money, stolen food tastes better. I guess. Yes. I don't get it. Let's, Let's be criminals for a while. All right. See, see what we think. All right. We'll try it out. You first. <laughs> All right. I'll let you know. All right. Then, like, report back. Oh, yeah. yeah Indiana Jones. Yeah. Uh, shoulder out. He said, I'm old. Look, look at his face. He's yeah. got bugs on him or dirt. No, I, I think those might be tracking it's... dots. Oh, oh I just figured he was too old so? to wipe the bugs off his face. I just figured it was like little H spots. spots. Oh, yeah. man. I hope, I hope that those are tracking dots. Uh, no, nah, it's probably just dirt or something yeah. in the scene. But yeah, they they originally said that it was going to be two weeks. Now they're acknowledging three months. Uh, and I mean, man, I I can't imagine what the insurance oh, uh, on a movie like that money. looks like. Like I mean, and, the, and like in the Lucasfilm camp, like the the devastation that uh, the death of Carrie Fisher uh, caused to that entire franchise, uh, like. Like this is even this is even bigger, right? So what does the insurance look like here? He's seventy eight. Yeah, in an action Why? movie where he does Why? his own stunts. Why would they have him do his own stunts? That's ridiculous, right? You know, it's just they should have said no, and they should take away his his flying credentials too. I mean, <laughs> just you know, oh, God. he lands on those golf courses just fine. <laughs> well, yeah, say what you will, he hasn't crashed successful yet um i mean if it was me i wouldn't you know uh think to crash on a golf course i would just like oh that's it I died eight now. his bones are old and brittle they should say okay now bring in the 40 year old stunt double bring in siler from stargate for god's right sense. yeah i'm i'm uh i'm half his age and i'm not doing that i'm not doing his stunts <laughs> you know oh it's like, let, let him let him age gracefully, for God's sakes. I mean, look, look, he's in great shape. Don't get me wrong. I mean, look at this picture here. Look at this guy. He's clearly got it going on. That was Call of the Wild. That was like, what, eight years ago? It's like three. It was no. that dog movie. No. That dog movie. Wasn't that what it was? Movie? That Wasn't that the one where he had like a well, CGI dog? And it was 2020. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess, but it's... How is that only last of, year? One of Jack London's greatest novels. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's like saying, you know, Moby Dick is about fishing. It's that fishing <laughs> movie. It's that. You know, the, the, the whale movie, yeah. not Jonah. The other yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, just, that's the one where it's a computer animated dog and it looked like Harrison Ford was on set for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was 77 at the time. Yeah, right? so break. Well, they were really smart, he though. He still because... managed to throw his shoulder out. <laughs> well, the producers of that movie knew that he's a 77-year-old man. Maybe just put him in a CGI volume and don't, yeah. like, have yeah. him, like, do stunts. 
maybe not have them climb the glaciers. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. no well, point. That's what killed me about uh, All Is Lost. I mean, how old was Redford when he filmed that? That was a demanding movie. Uh, the only other thing that I think we had on the agenda is we could talk about Tomorrow War. Yeah, we should. Yeah, I, I guess, sure. <laughs> uh, that... I mean, f this is the problem. Redford was 77 when they filmed All of Loss. Mm -hmm. And so now every 77 year old's like, no problem. If Robert Redford can do it, I can do it. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he was animated. And he didn't say a word in the entire movie. So, when, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Ford. Uh, I think you might have to have your face uh, digitally attached to a different yeah. dude's body from now on. Yeah. yeah. Someone else suffer, man. Right. Oh, uh, anyways, uh, 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 the Tomorrow, Tomorrow War. War. What a hot mess of a movie. You so, know, I, I enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, it was. Uh, <laughs> didn't know what it wanted to be when it grew so, up. So, so my expectations were exceedingly low, right? Yeah. So yep. I watched the whole thing and it's fine. It's what you would expect it to be. Yeah. Uh, but then the last 30 minutes are yeah. so ridiculous <laughs> so that, that I could hear I could Ooh. hear my eyes roll in my head. Right. And we're talking about a movie that has aliens, uh, time travel, time travel. And, and Chris Pratt as a science teacher. <laughs> I mean, all those things are more believable than what happens in the last 30 minutes. It, it makes <laughs> absolutely no sense. It's, yep. it's completely disjointed from the whole plot of everything that had just happened. It's just well, okay. Yeah. Here's here's my first objection. Chris Pratt. Well, wait, wait. First of all, J.K. Simmons, I would point out, is 66 during the filming of this. So he has eleven years. And he's, <laughs> he's ripped in this movie. And he was Jack. Yeah. yeah. He was super strong. He was super jack. So yeah, Chris Pratt is uh, like okay, so the war is happening for at least a year before Chris Pratt gets summoned. He's ex-military. Yeah. Uh, uh, retired and a science person, he would be in the first wave uh, to get drafted. Uh, and then we would just nuke all of Russia, like like from space. Like you, like nothing that happened in the future mattered because they came back and fought the aliens with machine guns. <laughs> oh my god, it was a bad movie, guys. Uh, my problem with that movie is if they would have edited out. 70% of the shots where they are machine gunning uh, <laughs> Starship Troopers in 2021 CGI bugs. Uh, I think yeah. I would have enjoyed it a lot more, but there was just so much. Now we're going to machine gun things for like three minutes. Yeah, but if they got rid of that, you would have to watch Chris Pratt try to act some Oof. more. You know, yeah. and... You know, he he's is, a fine action actor. He's he's a fine Star Lord. <laughs> yeah. And uh uh you know, but like to have like a deep emotional connection like Oof. like they want to cultivate with him and his daughter, which makes sense if you've seen the movie, like uh, it just it yeah. Yep. Uh, or this storyline, you know, about yeah. him reconciling with his it father. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, it was just so random. All right, but then after all of this, the thousands of dead peoples uh, that, that are involved, eight of us are going to take us uh, an airplane illegally into Russian airspace and then fight the aliens with machine guns. So after there's no the world where and... they both, remember, 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 they're like, hey, we found the origination point. It's in Russia. You think the whole world would be like, dude, we're there for you. We're nuke. back up. Let's just nuke it, you know, and then go in it, and wrap and, it up later. And we've we found this chemical agent that destroys them. And the, <laughs> and all the world's governments are like, no, we're not nah, interested in making whatever. that. Yeah. So, so one small fringe group is like, well, we can make some somehow. We have, we have like thirty or how many ever they so come up with. Dumb. And then, and then, and then, ostensibly, there's so much global tension they can't go to Russia with Russia's backing and the world community, who has been sending thousands of people into the future to die right. together yep. for a year. And then they're like, okay, well, turns out the global coalition has fallen apart. Da, 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 da. Yeah. 
So they're going to get shot down on the way in. It's not like, oh, well, then, you know, let's be a ragtag group of dirty dozen going in there to hang out in our C-130. It's like, no, no, you get shot down, you're dead. You know, this is not a smart thing. We have been doing this for a for a year. Right. Yeah. All the world's governments finally went came together. Working together. The only, the only pushback is people are getting sick of being put into the future to die. Yep. Mm-hmm. Finally, we come back with an answer. This is this is the what we've been searching for. We have been finally overrun in the future. This is our last hope. We need to make this. We know where they are. And they're all like, I don't know. People are complaining. You know, yep. people watch the news our ratings suck. That's right. Yeah, that. So J. Jonah Jameson and Star Lord are going to go machine gun spiders in Russia alone. It is so stupid. The end is so stupid. It really takes away the good, what, what good there was in the beginning, right? Because yeah, you know, it was okay. I kind of liked it, and then oh god, it was so bad. And they gave them no training. They gave them nothing. They're like, here, have a gun. See you later. Have fun. Yeah. 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 You know, and they're like, the grinder. They're, they're like, oh, we can't show you who you're fighting because you'll be too scared. But yet like, somehow <laughs> the wife was preparing us. The <laughs> wife was doing a trauma like group, right? She's like hosting. Yeah, she's and so what? Nobody knows. <laughs> but like, okay, so 30% of people are coming back from the future. They're all missing arms and legs and joining support groups, but nobody knows about how terrifying the spiders are. I'm sorry, this has been going on for a year. There are at least yeah. tens of thousands and- of people. Telling you, right. and, and and the premise is that, and they're, they're all talking about the people, white stripes, right? even though they haven't had a good they're, album for like twelve years. You know, so, yeah. they're running out of people in the future, so we need bodies, basically. So, right. so, so they're, the, and that's literally what they get. They give them no training. Yeah. They give them. It's like <laughs> they gave them uh, what pants. What's the name of, what the name of that World War Two movie? Was it Barbarians at the Gate? Mm-hmm. Where it's the Russians, where. They pair them up, and the first guy they give a rifle and a clip to, the second guy they give a clip to, and they're like, when that guy dies, you take his rifle and put your clip in it and start <laughs> shooting. You know, That's exactly what happens here. Yeah. yeah, I like that when they're getting ready for people to go, they're like, Aliens if you need dead. no yoga pants or cutoffs, <laughs> like that was the dress code. Your shirts are fine. No yoga pants. Pants no with holes in them. Pants? What the hell was that about? Is it like, does Amazon have like something against Lululemon? Is there like some deep seated beef between be. them? But again, I... this guy that you've got on the frame right now, he has the claw that has the secret dust on it that tells you where it is. And literally nothing right. else that happened in the movie matters. Like literally uh, all you needed to do was inspect <laughs> that guy's claw like, and then go nuke yeah. the And the he was a three timer. Like he'd been to the yeah. future three times. And it's like, like but the what? Very- the very beginning, what should have happened here is one of the scientists walk through and be like, hey, is that one of their claws? Let me look at that. And oh, then the hey, movie would have ended. That, that, that the microscope. Oh, look, it's Russian. Russian dust. <laughs> yeah, where did, where did they get this? It's just like, so okay. it's got Russian dust. And so then apparently they can go and just figure, they find it in like three minutes. Well, <laughs> and the fact that the brightest minds in the world can't figure it out but a volcano enthusiast third grader yep. is literally the one who's like, well, I know everything about volcanoes. Well, and the thing is, the second they introduced that kid, you knew he yep. was Chekhov's third grader. Yep. You know, you're like, oh, they're going to bring this kid out later. Chekhov's volcano expert. But they set everything up. I mean, it's uh, very much, this is, if you told me that this movie was written by an AI, uh, I think I would mean? believe you. This yeah. might be, what is it, the GPT-3 script because all yeah, it right. is is they just took the MacGuffins and the the, the setups yeah. uh, and payoffs from like 30 other movies. And the fact that the first, second, and third segments of this movie, I don't even want to call them acts, but the, they're so different uh, mm-hmm. from each other. Like yeah. it, it really is like the program probably crashed. And so they had to start it up again. Uh, and it's, oh, like, now we're in time travel part now. If, if there was a scene with a guy with a robe and a wizard hat, then you know for sure <laughs> yeah. the computer wrote this. <laughs> Yep. So yeah, uh, well, it was a mess. I, I watched it though, for it, sure. It was two hours and twenty minutes. If it would have been an hour it was ninety, long. if it was I made it to the end, I remember been thinking fun. midway through, I was like, "Oh, this is getting long." I started I, it, and it was two twenty. I was like, "I am not starting this now." And then I waited like two days to watch it because <laughs> I I think this is better than that zombie movie that came out. Oh, which one uh, in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Mm, but they're in the yeah, same. But- they're the in the first same 15 tier. minutes. The, the, the first, first 15, 
there's no 15 that, minutes of this movie no that are as good as, yeah. as, good as, yeah. as the first 15. There's, However, that that movie got bad so fast. Yeah, and I say consistently bad. But this one has moments. You know. Yeah, I feel like the those two movies have the exact same total amount of goodness. It's just this one is stretching it out over uh, uh, over two hours and twenty minutes. At least Zack Snyder had the wisdom to blow it all in the first ten. Yeah. All right, folks. And the whole like queen, and then the whole crazy like attack by the the males to protect the queen. I'm so like, much machine gunning. Uh, I'm so bored of watching people shoot bugs with machine guns. I'm like, this looks exactly like Starship Troopers was made this year, and it's not any better. It's not. It's not good. Like Starship Troopers was good. No. <laughs> Which I still firmly believe was a great movie. Oh, Starship Troopers 1 is a fantastic movie. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's bid ourselves farewell. Yeah, yeah, let's wrap it up. Goodbye, Chris Bono. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rob Rose Boom. So, all right, goodbye. No, what? <laughs> wait, 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 what do you got? Do Come it. On. No, that's it. No, I'm good. I'm good. Tanks empty. If you, have, if you have something else to say about the Tomorrow War, and now's the time. No. <laughs> We've I said have, enough. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> That checks out. All right. I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda. This is episode 650 or 635 of Geeks in Space, and we'll see you tomorrow. We are watching Valley Girl by 